All right, yeah. all right, we're changing things up here. No, ooh, it's pumped, baby. It is pumped. Hit that like button and let's pump that as well. Johnny just right. put that story in there so we could fud Avalanche because he doesn't like Avalanche. Okay. That's all. all. Right. That's we love it. We love it. We love uh, fudding our uh, coworkers' bags here. <laughs> all right. Arbitrum Arb token trades at $4 as 625,000 wallets receive the airdrop, including Johnny. Uh, we were talking, hey. did Johnny get it? Didn't Johnny get it? Johnny did get it. Uh, but then the website crashed. All right, claim for the token went live, uh, and the website went down under heavy traffic, as did the Block Explorer. Arbitrum, which started operating in 21, is the largest layer two blockchain on Ethereum. What? No, that isn't right, right? Wait, it's, I don't think say? its market cap is bigger than Polygon. No uh, way. Yeah. Say what? No, 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 I agree. Yeah, achieving scalability by using a technique called transaction rollups, which send batches of transactions to the Ethereum mainnet. That's why you watch us break this down. Sometimes you might read an article, don't believe everything that you read. Actually, don't believe anything that I say. I'm kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. Uh, I do heart JPEGs or NFTs. That's hey. real. All right, Binance, the largest crypto exchange by trading on, will list it at 1,700 uh, UTC. It's live. With perpetual futures being rolled out about 15 minutes later. Uh, that is one I'm staying away. Are you trying to trade that for the first day? Uh, Arb? Yeah. No, I'm not touching that. Yeah, I'm, I'm staying away. All right. Now to, uh, now this is Nick's uh, favorite, uh, favorite it's my section segment, there. baby. And I know BitLab, this was the part we were supposed to do Kelly. I'm glad we got Kelly in. Uh, some people are like, you're cutting Kelly off. Uh, I just saw the, the the show rolling along. We, we have a time limit, folks. We love Kelly. Uh, Kelly has the alpha. Um, so shout out to Kelly a bit loud. Yeah, if we give you all, all the here. Kelly Alpha, then you're not going to go watch the channel. So you got to go to the channel. You yeah, go to BitLab. That's true. I actually, I meant to ask him. I, I forgot at the time. I want to ask him about because he's so big on showing blockchain charts. I wonder if he's been looking at some of the charts that Balaji has been mm, sharing on some of these yeah, podcasts. You know, he'll, he'll, you got Balaji on your podcast. He'll bring like 87 uh, charts for you, and he's like, "All right, and this one, and then that one, and then this one." And he like, you know, has a nice detailed breakdown for yeah. all of them. I have to, uh, you know, maybe get him to look into some of those. All right, XRP surges 11%, oh much wow. to Nick's chagrin, as Ripple wow. president asserts confidence in a Ripple victory. Monica Long <laughs> expects Ripple to win its case against the SEC in 23 because the law and facts are on Ripple's side. That <laughs> doesn't sound facts. biased at all. <laughs> That's like a headline from not the news section of Fox News, but like the the... Greg Gutfield, like yeah. that's some some. I are guess these redditors? I like, love. Are Gutfield. these redditors? <laughs> yeah. All right. SEC sued Ripple and executives Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse in December 2020 for raising funds through an unregistered securities offering. Wow. Hey, throw an X up in the chat if you love the World Economic Forum. And uh, you know, fun fact: 2013. You know who China's representative for Ripple was? No. Justin Sun. Oh, really? Yeah. Market cap coming in at $1.2 trillion right now. 24-hour volume up slightly yesterday. Uh, you need to refresh that. Oh, ooh, let's refresh. We got old data, folks. We got old. Oh, yeah, down 4.5%. Yeah, because it had just a recent little pump yeah, there. That. All right, yeah, all right. Yeah. We're changing things up here. No, ooh, it's pumped, baby. It is pumped. Hit that like button, and let's pump that as well. 24-hour volume now up to $84 billion. Monday, 75. Tuesday, 65. Wednesday, yesterday, I think it came in at around 70, now 84, basically 85. Uh, Bitcoin dominance coming in at 44.6%. Ethereum dominance coming in at 17.9. Gas is double from where it was, uh, you know, for most of the week. Now coming in at 45 guay. Uh, wow, look at that little Bitcoin pump. I knew I should have... <sighs> I was in a short, and uh, I don't think I put uh, a, a take profit. Oh, mm. man. Oh, well, that's why you put a take profit. That's why you got to move it. You got to move it. You don't want to have a winning trade turn into a negative. To me, it's such a small amount fiat-wise. I didn't really do all the rules that I should have. Uh, DZ doesn't own any T-shirts, only hoodies. Eh, uh, I like four. All right. <laughs> Bitcoin, uh, it is up uh, for the week 17%, but right now coming in largely flat down 0.2%. Ethereum up slightly, 1.5%. We have, uh, that's actually a significant move. Tether coming in, okay, yeah, you look at it. It's coming in at a dollar one there. Wow. XRP still having a green day, up 25% on the weekly. Cardano slowed down, had a really nice pump yesterday. Now just kind of cooling nice. off uh, up 0.7%. You're going to add nice. some? Nice. 
Nice, nice. It is nice. Uh, and then we have Dogecoin up slightly, uh, Lido Staked Ether up slightly, Polygon and Solana uh, with a little downtick. Look at that Litecoin pump. Is that what Tom Crown is uh, typing Chirpal over and over for? His giant bag of Litecoin. I think they call him Mr. Litecoin. Uh, he is uh, quite happy right now. Uh, when you think of Litecoin, think of Tom, of course. Ton coin down a ton. Now let's look <laughs> at the top gainers and the top losers there. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to put up a poll. Uh, we love Tom. All right. Now, whoo, the number one gainer in the top 100 is Litecoin, folks. Now, we're up around 15%. Mask Network uh, breaking into the top 100. So coming in now uh, up about 12%. Dash dashed up double digit points up 10%. Aptos up a little bit. We have uh, Radix, Stacks, and The Graph. The Graph. Do you have any bold proclamations about the graph. I mean, the graph was a huge, huge pumper in January. I think it was January of 21. I think it was mostly because there's not that many coins on Coinbase at the time. So people were just looking to put their uh, Bitcoin profits into something. Yeah. What do you, what do you think about the graph? I have a, um, I have a tumultuous relationship with the graph because uh, Gemini is currently holding a big bag of my graph in there because I had in the earn program. Mm. So, I mean, the project is great. We reviewed it on the channel recently. It's like AI adjacent. It's kind of like a Oracle, but also like a search engine for blockchain. So it's it has really good tech. I think it'll be around for a it's while. It's like the opposite of Chainlink. It feeds the opposite direction, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's um it's a really interesting project. All right, uh, more NFT news. Home base here, Hotlanta. Hey. Hotlanta home, tokenized on Ethereum. That's 214K in under three minutes. So they took a loss. <laughs> <laughs> the sale marks the first step in a new partnership between Realty and Roofstock. Uh, single family focused sales company sold off a Georgia home uh, via tokenized NFT. Represented for both companies told Blockworks on Tuesday it marks their first collaboration between the two companies. Spokesperson did close metrics uh, behind the fractional lives of the NFT by Realty. 670 unique token holders snap up a total of 722 orders. Transaction process took two minutes, 46 seconds. The average base uh, ETH base purchase equated to about $300. Uh, Ether collected through their tokenization offering this week partially divides ownership of the property acquired for acquired for 218,000 USDC on OpenSea. Uh, they're saying tokenization is the future and you can be sure the SEC is listening. It looks like they're trying to be the bridge between an NFT it equals an asset. You need centralization for that. Yeah. I, I, or I'll sell you an NFT to my house right now. You know what? Go to the Georgia County, uh, you know, real estate. Yeah. They're like, I don't, who are you talking about? Like, but I bought it from DZRugPool.eth. Yeah. No, that's not going to work. There's going to be uh, a need for centralization. There's going to be a need for a, a medium, a central party to get the paperwork in order and make it as easy as possible for the two parties, the buyer and the seller. Uh, I don't want to be the guy that's like, you know, pouring uh, over a bunch of real estate contracts, making sure everything's right. You just want a trusted third party. It looks like they're going to try to be that. So pretty bullish for that in the future. <laughs>